from e Tours Russia. Since you loved our video about Wedding Hub, we decided to keep you posted on all of the upgrades of the park. If you didn't watch the video about Wedding Hub, so please follow the link and watch it over here. Subscribe our YouTube channel and follow us on social media not to miss all of these releases. So I remind you that Wedding Hub was the Soviet park presenting the achievements of the national economy. So it has several pavilions presenting the former Soviet republics. Some of them are closed, some of them are open, some of them are undergoing the restoration. But These days, Vedenha is different. It's the center of the sports, entertainment, museums, travel and education. We are going to visit the Special Purpose Garage Museum, which belongs to the State Protective Services of Russian Federation. This is basically a collection of their cars, which were used by high-ranking officials from the very times of the Russian Empire till nowadays, even the cars which are used by the current president. The prototype of the car which is used by the current president is just behind me. This is Aurus and it was presented in 2014 as the model of the future cars for the official cortege of the president. It has been 100 years since the foundation of the Special Purpose Garage. It was founded from the order of Vladimir Lenin in the year 1921. But actually, it existed even in times of Russian Emperor Nicholas II. It started from the purchasing of two different foreign cars. One of them was Belleville, another was the Mercedes. So the collection presents in the first poll its presents the different uniforms of the heads of the uh, special purpose garage as well as the cars or official escort cortege consisted of motorbikes. All of the motorbikes of the escort cortege even now are of BMW brand. The exhibition starts from two different examples of cars or two different brands of cars which were taken from the garage of Russian Emperor. One of them is Delaunay Belleville and another is Mercedes. So they were purchased by the royal family in the beginning of the 20th century or I would say at the age of the 19th and 20th century. And if you go further you're gonna see one of the oldest Rolls Royce which could be in Russian land. So Rolls Royce was actually used by Vladimir Lenin as well after the revolution of 1917. So almost exactly the same Rolls Royce was used by Vladimir Lenin. One model is presented in the uh, museum which is located in Leninsky Gore. It's not quite far from Moscow and uh, well Lenin himself uh, ordered to install a special track on the front wheels and a special skis in the back wheels to get to the Kremlin easily. Some cars were used uh, not only for high-ranking officials but also for their family members or foreign guests. One of them is presented just in the collection of the museum. This is the car ZIS-110. It was produced uh, since the year 1937 and you may remember it because it participated in the war conferences during the Second World War in Potsdam, Tegeran and Yalta. Before the Second World War, according to the decision of Politburo, Stalin started to use as his personal car the American one, which is Parker 12. After the war, he switched on the local produced car, which was ZIS 150. Both of them had a very good defense system. Most of the cars for hiring and officials were produced in the plants named after Likachov. Well, 
This car, which is just behind me, was produced in a plant named after Gorky, and it was owned by the former Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev. All by it, it was extensively used by the local administration people or nomenclature of the USSR. Uh, Khrushchev decided to own one too. But after his decision to fight with the privileges of local administration people and all of the cars were taken away from them and they started to be used as taxi cars or ambulance cars. Some people used to call it as a flat because the back seat of the car is very large and it could fit five or six people. Another car which attracts the visitors here is the car of model ZIL 111A. It was the personal car of Nikita Khrushchev and also uh, this car was a part of an escort portage which met Yuri Gagarin after he landed in Sheremetyevo airport just soon after his flight to the space. The pride of the collection of the museum is this very bright blue-colored minibus. The minibus is called as Yunost, and it can be translated from English, from Russian into English as the youth. When this car was produced, it was sent to the international exhibition in France and it got all of the prizes, all of the best prizes. So all of these uh, brands uh, existing in Europe at that time used it as an example for the production of the further minibuses. The new story of car production in Russia starts with ours. So this car is extensively used nowadays by the current president. And behind me you can find the exact car he used for his uh, inauguration ceremony in 2018 on the 7th of May. These cars have driver assistance systems which helps to avoid all of the emergency situations or minimize consequences of them. It has also nine airbags as well as the keyless access and handless opening of the trunk and engine starting. In the middle of the hole, which presents our cars, there is the unified module platform of each car. These are all the cars presented by this brand. And I want to see how large this platform is for each particular car. So this one, for example, for self-commented model. But how it's gonna look like for Senat Limousine? Let's see. So you just push it. The next hall is presented with a collection of cars which were used by the two last Soviet leaders Brezhnev and Gorbachev with uh, the first president of Russian Federation Boris Yeltsin and uh, the current president Vladimir Putin. Next to me there is a car of personal usage of Gorbachev, the last leader of the Soviet Union. This is a ZIL car and it had a very good defense system, protective system. It could withstand all the small arms and a grenade and even bombs. The garage has cars for special purpose. For example, this car was used by Brezhnev when he would go for hunting in the woods. The car is known as Volga and it has, for this purpose, very large wheels, so it's off-road car. Local production of cars 
stopped after the collapse of the USSR. That's why the first president had to switch on the German cars or Mercedes cars. So behind me two models of cars which were used by Boris Yeltsin and Vladimir Putin at the very beginning of the 21st century. I know that you desired to touch one of these cars and this is absolutely possible but in another pavilion of the museum. So the museum is divided into two pavilions number 53 and 54. In 54 there is the exhibition devoted to different engines and structure of all of these cars. Then it's also very interactive. So behind me also the same models of the cars. One of them used by Gorbachev, another by Stalin. And you can touch them or even you can see them inside. In the second part of the museum, there is a schematic module of the same Unist minibus, and it is designed inside as the cinema. Get your license card and try to park the Volga car in the Kremlin, which is absolutely impossible in reality, but I always have been dreaming about that.